Welcome to Reformation and Revival Now. Let me read for you from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before preached unto you. I want to share with you about conversion. And I would like to share with you about my personal testimony. It is my belief that very few people just get born again like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had a tremendous experience and all of us don't receive that type of um, fantastic salvation experience. But there are components of this experience that we should all have. Paul didn't know Christ for sure. But when Paul came in contact with Jesus Christ, he said, Who art thou, Lord? So in other words, Paul didn't know who it was, but he says, whoever this is, he's in charge. He's God, whoever he is. And there has to become a point when it's no longer a religious persuasion, but you know the living Christ. And I'd like to share with you out of my own journey and how God brought me through. This is not to get those of you who are born again and you gave your life to Jesus Christ. What I'm saying to you, you need to be born again, born again. No, but actually to those who may have, may have been converted or raised culturally uh, as a Christian, and that's part of your upbringing, nothing wrong with that. But you may not have ever really received Jesus Christ you may have not received that revelation where you know him personally, and you need to. And while Paul's conversion is very dramatic, there are elements of his conversion that all believers should experience, regardless of whether it's fantastic or awesome or, you know, just the type of blow you away or if it's something that's very subdued. There is one thing that is consistent in everyone's experience. You should know Jesus. You should know who he is. Now, God began to touch my life throughout the early 60s. And uh, from time to time, when I was a child, the Lord would speak to me. And the Lord, not would say speak to me at that time. I would say at that time, he would just reveal his love to me. And I would become overwhelmed by his love sometimes during the, the what they call the processional in the Baptist church I was in at the time. And a lot of times God would just touch my heart and I would just be so full of happiness. And I enjoyed going to church and I enjoyed the, the worship leader at that time. He's been there for many, many years now. Um, but I just felt the presence of the Lord. Then in the um, early 70s, when I transferred over to the more of the Hillcrest area in DC, I had what I call my first recorded experience with the Lord. Whereas I had these bad grades and I was afraid to come home because my father previously a few years ago said he was ashamed of me. And that was, I was so afraid to bring that bad report card home knowing that I would more likely repeat uh, the fourth grade. So as I was going home with tears in my eyes, looking at that terrible report card, I said, Lord, I can't face my father. He will reject me. He told me what he would do if I ever brought home grace like this again. And I cried. And he spoke to me and he said, I know. But I love you and I will be with you. Take your report card home and lay it on the table. And this love came over me and courage came to me. And I took that report card, laid it on the table, on the dining room table, and went back into the TV room and watched Ultraman. That was so real to me, and I knew it was God. And back then, I didn't differentiate between the Holy Spirit, Father, and Jesus. To me, they were just all God. Okay. Nevertheless, I heard the voice of God come to me, and I still hear him in that way today. But I wasn't a Christian. In the 60s, I wasn't. And at this time, I wasn't. Now, if you had asked me if I was a Christian, I would have told you yes. But I didn't have quite everything that was necessary. I believed in Jesus with all my heart, and I was baptized in the Baptist church. 
and receive the right hand of fellowship. Okay. Now, as the years would pass, I would begin to have uh, unique experiences with God. Um, when I used to have a paper route, I would see the Lord speak to me from the sky. And I won't get into to, to, to that detail because you don't have to have that to be a Christian, but that's just how God dealt with me at the time. And one time I was in my parents' car and the Lord came into the car. I don't want to go into great detail about that, but God just filled me with such a, a wonderful expression of his love to this day, I'll never forget it. But I still, in all of that, was not converted. I still, in all of that, was not truly born again, even though now at this time, I know that Jesus is real and I know that he loves me. But the one thing that had not happened until later on, a few years later, I began, God began to deal with me as a sinner. Now, this would be this would be the most prolific experience I would have up to this point. Somehow God convinced me that I needed him as savior and that I wasn't saved based on my knowledge and on my mother's place with the Lord. For some reason or another, I knew that my sin had to be dealt with. Now, I don't know how that came to me. I do know that my younger brother, uh, Kelly was uh, had moved out because he was so sick of me and my manipulation and my bossiness. So in a sense, Kelly left so I could be alone with who I was. And but God began to deal with me about, about me being a sinner. And all of a sudden, I was afraid to leave the house because I felt that if I get hit by a car, I go straight to hell. Now, I'm not saying that would have happened. I'm just saying that that is what, that is how the conviction came to me. And on my bunk bed, I wasn't even in a church service. I gave my life to Jesus Christ and asked him to forgive me of my sins. And I said, Lord God, give me a desire to love you and to serve you. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. Lord, I just turn away from my sin and put my trust in you. And from that time forth, that is what I consider to be my born again experience and my conversion. Even though. I had had experiences with God up to that point, and I actually knew who Jesus was as far as him being God. But I came into covenant when I, when, when I accepted God's terms. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we become Christian, we become Christians on God's terms. We receive a revelation, but we have to come into a relationship with him based on what the word of God says. I had to deal with my sins by repenting and receiving the remission of sins. And Jesus came into me and he has basically been dealing with me in an intimate way ever since that day. Now, that doesn't mean that all the times before I didn't experience him. And if you had come up to me, I would have told you I was a Christian. But at that time, at 17 years of age, of age in my um, on my bunk bed I knew that Jesus Christ was my Lord and I knew that my sins were forgiven and I knew that I was supernaturally his child not that I could express it all that great I just knew and what I want to say to those of you who are listening to me don't take for granted and even though you have all the right information about being a Christian, that you're a Christian. Because I had all the right information. I was in a good Bible-believing church. And on top of it, I had spiritual experiences. But there came a time when the revelation of who Jesus was and the terms of the gospel or the terms of the covenant came together, both the revelation and the terms of the covenant or the way of salvation came to me. They came together and they formed what I call true conversion or being born again. Because sometimes conversion can be deceptive. You can convert to just about anything. But there's only one way to be born again. You have to know the living Christ. Now I'm going to come back to you in another video and I'm going to get into receiving Christ. 
And I want to share with you what happened to my heart. Now, coming up very soon, we're in the month of August, will be uh, the third anniversary of uh, Reformation and Revival Now. And in just a few, few weeks, less than a few weeks now, we'll be doing the People's Banquet. But I'm going to be sharing with you how I became converted, and I'm going to um, have that on a series with the original message that I preached when I first started this, um, this ministry. But I want all of you to understand that we're not Christians because of what we believe. You say, well, Brother Kevin, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, believe and be baptized. He that believeth shall be baptized. He that believeth not shall be damned. Yes, I can't contradict that, and I'm not trying to. I'm trying to let you know that believing in Jesus is not mental assent. You must experience what the Apostle Paul experienced. It may not be that dramatic, but you have to know him as Lord. He has to reveal himself to you as God Almighty, as Lord. And you have to come into a relationship with him on his terms which is laid out in the scriptures, of course. So you bring the revelation of Jesus Christ together with the terms of the covenant and you will have Bible conversion or what I call being truly born again, regenerated. Those two things have to come together and that's what happened in my life. I had plenty of experiences, more than the average young man at that time. But I'm telling you, I wasn't converted. I wasn't born again until the revelation, along with the conditions of the covenant, came together. But anyway, I'll be right back in just a little while, and I'll share with you more about that. Bye-bye.